What's up guys? Have you ever wondered how to configure Docker from scratch in your project? Or maybe you always wanted to know more about Docker? Great! In this tutorial I will explain how to set up Docker for a Symfony application, both for local development and for production. At the end of this video I will share some information what to do if you have any troubles. I am often asked, why should I use Docker? I worked without it many years. My teammates and I are doing just fine. So, I have prepared a list with the main reasons why you should use Docker. It greatly reduces the cost of switching between different projects. You don't have to handle several library versions on your machine. For example, you work on two projects, and one uses PHP 5.4 and another one PHP 7.2. Also, Docker greatly reduces the time needed to install a project as a new developer. You simply run one command and project is launched without any hassle. Docker allows to reproduce the production infrastructure. Same operation system, same libraries, and same versions. Docker allows you to run your tests directly on CI platform. I will start this tutorial with preparing Docker configuration for local development. In the description of this video you will find a link to the final result. You can use this, or you can do everything from scratch step by step with me. Let's create an empty Symfony project, which will be dockerized. I would suggest to visit official Symfony website and check recommended ways of creating a new project. For this tutorial we can create a new Symfony skeleton project using Composer. If you don't have Composer yet, go to official website and there you will find instruction how to install it. All links will be available in the description to this video. So, copy this command and execute it in terminal. It will take some time until all dependencies are installed. Then I open this project in PHP Storm. Also we will need a Docker and Docker Compose. You can install them from official websites. On my machine they are already installed. Open PHP Storm and create a new file Docker Compose YAML. First we should specify a version which will be used for Docker Compose configuration. The latest version at this moment is 3.8. Then we can define a block services and first service which we will describe is a database. I will use Postgres database, so I would name service the same. Now we should specify an image. To find the proper image we should go to Docker Hub website. This is a library for container images. In search field type an application you are looking for. In our case it's Postgres. There are several results, but we need one with label official image. It means that such images have proper documentation and ensure that security updates are applied in a timely manner. Open this result and scroll to support tags. We will use tag 12.4 Alpine, because it is the latest version of Postgres and the size will be smaller than non-Alpine image. Now we should configure this image using environment variables. Go back to Docker Hub and scroll to the title How extend this image. Here you will find all possible environment variables. We require only some of them. Postgres DB, name of the database which will be created. Postgres user, user which will be created. Postgres password. Set the password for user which we have specified earlier. PG data, the path where all database files will be stored. Then we should specify which ports the service will expose from container to the host machine. I will set default Postgres port. Also I would recommend to specify a restart policy as on failure, so container will be restarted if the exit code indicates an on failure error. We also can mount host folder to the container for database files, so you will have all data even if container is removed. I name such folder as dbdata 
and it will be located in the root of the project. Flag RW means that this shared folder will be available for read and write. Now we can describe the service for our PHP code. For this we will build our own image. We should define build block and set a context. Context is a path to which this service will have access. As image in this case, we should specify a name how we want that our custom image will be named. I would name it sfdockerphp with tag dev. And I would also set a restart policy on failure, same as for database. For this service, I set several environment variables for Symfony application. App env equals dev. App debug 1, which means that the bug will be enabled. Also, I would set time zone with default value UTC. And it's very important to specify that PHP service depends on service Postgres. It means that first Postgres will be launched and only then PHP. The last service will be engines and we will also use custom image. Image name will be SF Docker Engines with tag dev. And restart policy will be also on failure. For Nginx I would map container port 80 to host port 8080. And Nginx will depend on PHP service. Let's create Docker file for our custom image. I would define variable for PHP version, which the latest at this moment is 7.4.10. I like to control even minor versions, but you can specify for example PHP 7.4 or PHP 7, and Docker will pull the latest version for you. Next step is specifying base image. I use official image PHP FPM Alpine. I don't want to bore you with each aspect of this configuration, so I will use already prepared code and explain the most important parts. So, first all base utilities are installed. Then we install Postgres database. Then Packle modules such as opcache and xdebug. Enable them. Install Intel extension. And at the end we remove unnecessary files and folders. Here we copy composer file from image composer. Specifying tag 1 is crucial as newer version 2 will be ready soon. I would strongly recommend to install Prestissimo Composer plugin that downloads packages in parallel to speed up the installation process. Here we specify working directory. Copy composer files and install all dependencies. And then we create folders for cache and logs. Let's now create a new folder docker.php. And inside it create a new file php.ini. The configuration is already prepared by me and it consists of general PHP settings and Symfony performance recommendations. Some configurations are disabled for local development. Duplicate this file and name phpcli.ini. I would keep configuration the same, but you might want to change it. Switch back to Docker file and scroll to place before the installation composer plugin. Let's copy files php.ini and phpcli.ini from host machine into container. Now we should create a file docker-entry-point.sh. This script will be executed when all preparations in docker file are ready. So, here we will install dependencies if required and install assets. And this service will wait till connection to database is established. Switch to docker file. Copy docker entry point script into local bin directory. And make it executable. Now set our script as entry point. Open file docker-compose-yaml. 
mount root project folder to app and set flags rw and cached. I put a link in the description if you want to know more about all available flags. Docker file for PHP service is ready, and now let's start with Nginx. It's possible to use one Docker file for several services. It's called multi-stage builds. I will demonstrate it. Open Docker file. Define a variable for Nginx version. Current latest version is 1.18. Scroll to the bottom and specify another base image and Jinx Alpine. Now we can mark this stage with a unique name. Scroll to the beginning and also mark the first stage. Now we should use these names as references in Docker Compose file by specifying target property. Switch to Docker file and specify working directory for Nginx. Mount local folder public to container and mark it as read-only. Create new folder engines conf.d and inside create a file default.conf. I have prepared the default engines configuration for Symfony application. There is a root folder, some custom configuration for API endpoints, section for profiling, rewrite logic, section to process PHP files, and output Nginx logs into standard output so they will be available in Docker logs. Let's add this configuration into Nginx container. Now we can finally test Docker setup. Run Docker Compose app in Terminal. At first launch, Docker will download all required images and it will take some time. But next time, Docker will be launched much faster. And we can see that PHP container cannot connect to the database. Let's stop Docker by pressing Ctrl-C. By default Symfony Skeleton project doesn't have ORM, so we should install it. Switch to Terminal and add ORM pack via Composer. After installation you will get new entry in the .env file with database URL. We should change it. Replace MySQL with Postgres. For other parameters let's quickly return to Docker Compose file. We should use exact values which we have specified in Postgres service. Host name should be changed to service name which is defined in Docker Compose file. In our case it's Postgres. Let's run Docker Compose again. And now everything started without any problems. Ok, stop docker. You can also launch a project with a command docker compose up d Flag d means that project will be launched as a daemon. 
Scan Docker PS to check if all containers are running fine. Here you also see the main information about running containers. To run something inside container, type docker compose, then exec, then name of a service which should be used, and then a command which you want to execute. For demonstration purpose I have added sample code. There are order controller and three entities. Check info box in the description if you are interested in how to create an API application with Symfony. In order controller I get one order and return it. Let's test it. I use the tool Postman to send API requests. Ok, it's launched and I can send requests now. And we got a response. Go back to controller and I will just replace order variable with some string to show that our code is in sync with docker container. And every time you change code, it's immediately available in the container. Run the request one more time. And we got our test string. Ok. There is a problem on some operational system that mounted folders might cause performance degradation. For example, it's not recommended for Mac users to mount folders like var because application makes many requests to files in this folder and performance really drops. There is an open GitHub issue in Docker repository. The link will be in the description if you're interested in more details. As a solution, mounted folders can be replaced with named mounted volumes. I would recommend to use mounted volume for database files and var folder. For this, create section volumes and specify any name for your volumes. I would name them dbdata and var. Now replace mounted path with volume name. And for PHP service we should add an entry for a new volume. If performance of your application is very slow, you can also move vendor folder into mounted volume. But in this case you won't get access from the host machine to the content of this folder. It means that you will not have installed bundles locally and of course autocomplete for such classes won't work. Recently I have found a good article how to synchronize files using intermediate container. But it's really up to you to decide if it works it. And what do you do to speed up docker on Mac? Write a comment to this video with your solution. For local development, it's very important to be able to debug your code. So, let's set up xdebug. Under folder docker.php create a new file xdebug.ini. You can use the same configuration or adapt it for your needs. The most important parts are remote port and IDE key. Open docker file and copy file xdebug.ini into container. Go to docker compose yaml and in php service add new environment variables xdebug.config and php IDE config. Open php storm preferences and search for debug. In xdebug section, change port to exact one which you have specified in file xdebug.ini. Click on Add Configuration and then on Plus. Select PHP Remote Debug. Put any name for this configuration and enable filtering by ID key. Click on three dots to add a new server. Click Plus and specify a name for this server. Host will be localhost and port 8080 as we have set it in Docker Compose file. Also we should enable path mapping. Here we should map host path to the project into project path in the container. In id key field specify that key which you have added in xdebug.ini. Apply changes and go to terminal. Run docker compose down v to stop containers and remove volumes. Now we should rebuild containers by running docker compose up minus d with flag Minus minus build. Once you removed volumes, database files are removed as well. So I run migrations to recreate tables.
Open Order Controller, add breakpoint, and start debugger. In the debugger tab, you can see which IDE key is currently used. Let's test it. Open Postman and send request. The bucket terminated process and you have access to all variables. So it works as expected. Now I show you how to connect to database which is run in Docker. Open database window, click on plus, data source, PostgreSQL. Set a name. Keep host as localhost, as in user use SF user, and for password, random password. Database name change to test. Click on test connection. And it successfully passed. Apply changes. In database window you will have your database with all tables. For example, let's open table app order. And you can see its records. Now I want to show you how to integrate PHP interpreter from Docker into PHP Storm. Open PHP Storm preferences and type PHP in search field. In CLI interpreter drop-down list, you will see your local PHP if available or just nothing. Click on three dots to add new interpreter. Then click plus and select from Docker. In this window, PHP Storm will prefill some information. Check that it's correct and click OK. You should see PHP and Xdebug versions. Apply changes. Open file index.php and add breakpoint. Now we can run this file by clicking on debug index.php. And you can see that process was interrupted and the bugger is triggered. Another use case how you can use this feature is running unit tests directly in PHP Storm. For this we should install PHP unit. Switch to terminal and add Symfony PHP unit bridge via composer. When installation is finished, we should run PHP unit in order to install all dependencies. Now switch to PHP Storm and open class or the controller. Go to menu Navigate and click on Test. Here click on Create new test. Check that class name and directory are correct. In the test I would create a new instance of controller and add a breakpoint. Open preferences and search for tests. Go to test frameworks and add new PHP unit. Select interpreter which we have created earlier. In PHP unit library select path to PHP unit and type a path which is mentioned above. It will be project root directory. And then type bin PHP unit. Click on refresh button. That's it. Click OK and let's run test with the bug. And it works. I would add some assertions. Test passed successfully and we see results in the window. At this point our Docker setup for local development works perfectly. Let's prepare Docker configuration for production. Copy Docker Compose file and name it Docker Compose Prod YAML. I will show you how to launch your application in Docker when database is located separately, for example in another server. So first remove Postgres service. Change tag from dev to latest. Also change Symfony environment from dev to prod. Remove all environment variables except time zone. Remove depends on and volumes. 
when Jinx also changed tag to latest. Remove volumes. And also remove volumes block. For prod version we should specify another docker file. Duplicate existing docker file and name it docker file prod. Here we should remove xdebug module and config for it. Also we will create separate PHP configuration for production. Then we should move all required files and folders from host machine into container. As all necessary files are already located inside the container, we can run post install scripts. Post install scripts are such scripts which you can define in Composer JSON file and they will be executed automatically when you run Composer install. In my case, there are scripts to clear cache and install assets. I don't want to use root user in production environment, so I give permissions to user www.data for specific folders. And then we define that this user will be used to execute all commands in this container. In Nginx section, we should copy all assets which were generated in previous stage. To do so, we can use command copy with flag from and specify stage name and path to folder or file which will be moved to this container. And uh, let's remove volume for var folder. Copy file php ini and rename it to php prod ini. Do the same for php cli file. For production we can now enable more advanced caching. I would imitate external Postgres database by running the database in a separate Docker container. Important parts are password, user and database name. Ok, database is ready. Open Docker Compose prod YAML and let's add environment variable database URL. This variable will override the value which is set in .env file. We should use production credentials. As host, we should specify IP address where our database is located. As my database is run on the same machine, I can use utility if config to get correct IP address. In my case, local IP address is in block EN0. If you have troubles to get your IP address, I have added a link in the description to the article with good explanation how to do it. Use this address as a host name. On production environment, IP address usually doesn't change. Go to terminal and run docker compose and specify docker compose prod file. As we see, all containers are up and running. Now we can launch a console inside the container. And here we see that environment is production and the bug is disabled. Let's run migrations. Now we can test our production setup. Open Postman and send request. And we got a proper response. Alright. At this point, we have completed Docker configuration for local development and for production.
I want to show how you can make your life a little bit easier working with Docker by using makefile. Basically, we will create aliases for most frequently used commands. Create a new file, makefile. At first, we will define a command to launch a project with dev configuration. Another command will be to shut down project. Next, we will define a command to rebuild project and start it from scratch. I would also add the command to recreate a database. It's very useful during development. Also, we can add a command to launch a project with prod configuration. And it might be handy to have a command just to build a prod images. Ok, let's try it. Switch to terminal and type make up. And project is starting. Type make d and press tab twice. You will see possible commands. So, now you have autocomplete for all commands. Isn't it nice? You shouldn't have any problems if you did everything correctly from this video. But let's say you have a situation when something doesn't work. What to do? Where to check? There might be different reasons why your containers don't work. I would recommend to start from checking logs. Open terminal and check running docker containers. Are all of your containers in this list? If not, run docker ps a with optional filter by image name which was specified in docker compose file. This command will show you even stopped containers. To check containers logs, run docker logs and specify container id or name. In logs you usually can find a source of a problem. As another quick solution, you can remove local images and build them again. If you cannot remove some image, try to stop containers first and then remove image. If it doesn't help, you can try to use flag force. Another very useful command is to remove all unused containers, images and volumes. This command not only frees up a disk space, but also removes corrupted images and volumes. And when you launch a project, Docker will rebuild all images again. If you have an error during an image build, check any error messages in output. Usually there is a meaningful explanation, and if not, just google error message or error code. It might be a spelling mistake, syntax error, or incompatible package. Another common mistake to use files in docker file before they actually mount it. For example, you run some symphony commands in docker file, or you execute composer install without flag no scripts. Don't forget that by default composer will run post install scripts. You should use docker entry point if you want to execute some scripts during launching a project. And don't forget, Google is your best friend. That's it. I hope this tutorial will help you to know docker better. Subscribe to my channel if you want to know more about Symfony. And if you have any questions, leave them in comment section below. Thank you for watching.